Issue with Chase Claypool, the Steelers receiver. we got to mention this because you never know what the league's going to do under the personal conduct policy. The right. league has so much discretion, it can do whatever it wants, frankly. A video emerged. It was overnight, Tuesday into Wednesday. Yeah. Chase Claypool from March 13, a fight at a bar in Southern California that spilled out into the street. At one point, it looks like he goes up to a guy who's on the ground and gives him a kick. Then there's a guy who lunges at Claypool and lands – face first on the ground. It looks like Claypool maybe like shoves his head back into yeah. the asphalt. Hey, I, I, Chris, look, these guys got to know when to disengage. Yeah. Whether you're whether you're a pro athlete or not, I tell my son all the time, if you're out, if you're somewhere, if you sense anything going down, just get the hell out of there. Because, number one, you don't know who has a gun That's nowadays. True. You're right. Just get the hell out. Just have that instinct of something's going down and I'm getting the hell out of here. And especially – if you're a guy who's subject to discipline from your employer for anything you do anywhere you are, yeah, get the hell out of there when you see something going down. Yeah, that's right. He's got too bright of a future. I mean, he could be a superstar. Uh, you, you've you heard me talk about him for the last two years. He's got everything you want. Everything. He's one of those guys when he walks, in, he walks in the room, you go, what? You're a receiver? Holy crap. Did they build you in a lab? Like, I mean, he is a freak of nature on the field, off the field. I, He wasn't – he looked like he was trying to kind of just keep the peace and things like that, and people kept coming Until at him. Until he kicked the guy. Well, the kick will – okay. You know, again, it, a fight broke out. But you're right. I, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. It's not the most egregious thing in the world either. And then when a the guy comes at you, I mean, yeah, I don't know what I, that guy had already drank or smoked, but you weren't going to – Kicking a guy who's on the ground. Yeah. I, look. I, I love Chase Claypool, but kicking a guy on the ground isn't cool. Yeah, I, I don't I, know. I'm saying when a, a fake fight breaks out like that, some things happen. But you're disengage. right about disengage. You're disengage. right. You're right. And then the, the, and the push- here's the here's the other reason. Yeah. Everywhere you go, I anything know. you do, I know. can and will be used against you because somebody else is recording it. No doubt. Which is why we even know about it. it Back in the old days, you'd hear 50 different versions about what happened. Oh, you wouldn't what? even know that he kicked anybody. Oh, what? Back in the old days, we might not have had the Raiders, the Steelers, the Giants, or any of those teams. They, they'd all been in jail. Who knows what the hell would have happened? Uh, but, again, I, I don't think it looked egregious enough for the NFL to take action. Yeah, he gave a little kick. It wasn't like he crushed the guy's face or anything. I mean, it didn't look like he made, like, square contact. The guy attacked him, and he basically just threw him on the ground, and that was it. But you're, I mean, I'm not arguing with your point. It's just it's a different day and age. There's a lot of fake tough guys out there, and it's just not worth it for, for what he's got in front of him as a football player. The NFL's personal conduct policy is a tool of public relations that's all it is 99.99 percent of all the employers out there wouldn't care about something like this they're not going to do anything to you for something like this these are things that happen on your own time away from work there are some states where you better be careful what you do for to someone who engages in some sort of misbehavior when they're not at work the only reason it's permissible in the NFL setting is the unions agreed to the personal conduct policy has agreed to and authorized the policing of players in their private lives. But because the NFL has so much discretion, you know, there are times when they exercise that discretion to not turn a, a small issue into a big issue. That's happened, I believe. And, and also Claypool could be the victim of circumstance where this is a good opportunity to remind all these players Number one, that there is a personal conduct policy. You know, because post Ray Rice, so many guys changed their ways and complied, we may be getting into a new generation of players who don't really understand. They haven't they haven't experienced in the locker room yeah. secondhand what happens when a guy gets suspended. <laughs> and also after a year after a year of everyone being at home, yeah. guys are out and about again. You're right. I'm telling you, Clay Claypool could get whacked by the NFL for this simply to send a message to all the other players out there. And I'm not saying he's going to face a six-game suspension. That's the baseline suspension for any act of violence. And we see the act of violence on tape. But he could get something just as a way to publicize to all players, don't mess around now that you're back in a position where you can go out to bars, be smart, don't be stupid, disengage. And if you don't, you're going to face the consequences. Yeah, but, um, Mike, I, I don't disagree. You might be right. I don't think this is one that d- deserves that. I, I don't think it's quite egregious enough. And 
you know, to what you're and saying. Pl- we can, we can talk know, for a full I segment know. about guys who got stuff they didn't I deserve. get it. But, I, you know, I think Deshaun Watson's reminding everybody just, you know, plenty Did, well. And, I know well, it's not the same, though. but it's still, yeah, it's still, you know, get your butt in gear, don't do, do the right thing, all that type of stuff. Uh, but, yeah, it's not a good look for Trace Claypool. And just play full. I hope, man. I hope, I hope that the bar fight dynamic is far more prevalent than the Deshaun Watson dynamic. I hope he's the only well, guy. We're in, in an the era NFL because of social, that social media, like where, you know, everyone's a, 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 a fake tough guy. It's just the way it is. It's, you know, uh, I say this on social media and there's just too much. Of, I get it. I mean, and I'm nobody, but you know, when you go out and do things, people say things, you know, as you walk by to get underneath your skin or do that type of stuff. And yeah, you got to be mature and walk away, but it's worse now than ever. People are always like that. And uh, yeah, it's hard to avoid why, why for a young say, guy. Why would, why would you say you're nobody? You're well, somebody. I mean, not like a why would you, big... you're somebody. You're the son of Phil Sims. <laughs> I, I am. I am the damn son of Phil Sims. You're right. I'm <laughs> proud of that. You got a problem with that? Screw off. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.